When learning something new, it is always useful to learn from people with more experience. In my case, hydroponics is the topics I'm learning, and this channel documents the journey. To avoid replicating long-known mistakes, I researched what are the most common tips and problems one can run into when getting started with hydroponics. The following are a compilation of what kept coming back when I was reading, and I will add a link below to the article I wrote with all the sources I used. Let's get into it. The first mistake is in the choice of the system. It might be tempting to jumpstart with a complicated hydroponic system. I did that and it did not work so well. At the beginning, try out simple systems. Start small and as your experience and confidence builds up, move on to more complex setups. Common recommendations for starting out are the weak and crafty systems. Both are passive, which means they have no moving parts and do not require any pumps or electricity. Also, the maintenance and monitoring required, like adjusting pH or changing water and other stuffs, is minimal. For example, a crafty system can be built, forgotten while the plant grows and harvested when the plant is mature. I will make some detailed video explaining how they work, so stay tuned. The second mistake involves the plant you choose to grow. Plants that work well with hydroponics are water-loving, fast-growing, leafy greens. Growing a tomato plant is possible, same for a cucumber, but it will be harder and will require more adjustments in nutrients levels and pH and other parameters. It basically has a more complex growth than a lettuce head. So here the point is to start with a few easy-to-grow crops like spinach, lettuce and other leafy grains, herb like basil, parsley, mint and others do fine too. Once you're comfortable with those, you can scale up in numbers and move on to more complex plants like tomato, cucumber and all the others I don't know about. Another key thing here is to learn about the plant you're growing. The characteristics of the system components are chosen to support the plant you grow. So check out what temperature, pH, nutrient mix, etc. the plant you grow likes. Finally, grow something you enjoy eating. For example, I have some basil around, but it's just sitting there because I don't particularly enjoy it. But as a tea lover, growing mint is more suitable for me because I will use it daily. So I'm starting to grow some. Our third mistake is starting too big, moving too fast, and ignoring the basics. This is related to the system and plant's choice. Complexity aside, more plants mean more maintenance and management for the system. It also becomes harder to tr troubleshoot when something happens because there are more things going on at the same time. It is better to start small with a few plants, understand how they work and what they like before adding to the system. Starting small also allows to understand and get used to the basics, like how and when do you know your light is adequate, how to set up the correct pH level in the water, how to provide nutrients in the correct ratio, what about oxygen, temperatures. All of these needs sometimes to be mastered. So set up a small system, try things out with it, look at the results, and once you have a working recipe, scale up. Just to make it clear though, common basics mistakes includes First, limiting plant growth by not delivering the right quantity, intensity, and type of light to the plant, as well as having an inadequate pH level, which reduces the ability of the plant to take in nutrients. Usually, pH should be between 5.5 and 6. In second, droning the plant. This can happen in two ways. First, by ignoring oxygenation of the reservoir, either through a lack of air pump, or by droning air roots when topping up the reservoir. Second, by ignoring water temperatures, which affect oxygen levels in the water. The temperature should be between 18 and 20 degrees Celsius. In third, we have the issues of drying up your plants by choosing a substrate that do not hold any moisture. Gravel, for example, can be an issue in certain systems. In the opposite direction, if your substrate holds too much moisture in a system where it should not, your plant can rot. Fourth, we have burning the plant by providing too many nutrients. This causes yellow, dried up leaves and eventually plant death. And five, 
promoting disease by ignoring aeration. I might forget some of them, but basically, mistakes cluster around delivering plant requirements in the right way, and to do so, you need to understand them. That's why I will make detailed videos for each of the plant requirements explaining why they are important and how to deliver, monitor and maintain them. Of course, it will always depend on the plant you grow. Now let's move on to our fourth mistake, ignoring monitoring and maintenance. Delivering plant requirements in the right way will require monitoring and maintenance. The complexity of your maintenance schedule depends on the system you choose. For example, crab key systems are low maintenance, you set it up and forget it. In contrast, deep water culture systems require more attention and constant adjustments of pH, temperature, oxygen and other parameters. The best way to deal with this is to set up a maintenance schedule with habits related to the task that needs to be completed. It does not have to be complicated, you can tell yourself. Every morning, I will go and check the temperature of the water, or every Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday, I will check the pH level and adjust it if needed. For example, right now, I am regrowing lettuce from scraps, so I set up a habit of changing the water every morning after having my coffee, and also take a picture of it at the same time to make a time lapse later. This is simple yet effective, and you can adjust your habits based on the system you have to deal with. There are four steps in setting up a maintenance and monitoring schedule. First, you want to know your performance indicators. For example, the goal of a hydroponic system is to make a plant grow. So, your performance is based on the growth of the plant. Then, you want to know what affects this performance. These are your leverage points. We can take the pH level, for example. If the pH is not right, between 5.5 and 6, the plant cannot take nutrients and will not grow. After this, you ask yourself how to monitor these elements that affect performance. In the case of pH, you will need a pH meter to measure it and a testing schedule to regularly get feedbacks on its level. Once you have this feedback, you need to know what to do when it's not how it's supposed to be. For example, if you measure the pH and it's 4, you know it's not the proper range, so you can add baking soda or a pH solution from the hydro store to make it go up. Then you can adapt this logic to each element affecting the performance of the system. These elements will be the plant's requirements, like light, oxygen, temperature, etc. That's why hydroponics can go out of hand with automation. Some farms exist where machine learning and AI systems are used to monitor and adjust all elements affecting performance in real time 24-7 to maximize growth. For now, just keep it simple and start small. I think that's pretty much it for things to avoid and tips for starting out. I'm, I am also in the early stages of the journey, so let's learn together and move forward. If you like the video, subscribe to stay updated. In the meantime, have a nice growth.